Right, hello and um, welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Benson Portogo, who is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area in Texas. How are you doing, Benson? I am doing excellent, John. Uh, thank you so much for having me here today. Oh, absolutely. And Benson's an investor, author and founder at Consistent Profit Tree and author of the book you can see over his shoulder there, The Business System That Never Fails. And what we're going to talk about today is how to overcome fear in business. So, Benson, uh, let, let's bottom line this to, to begin with. What do you think are some of the major fears that people have, uh, you know, either when they when they're running their own business or whether they're in business uh, with others. When it comes to sales, and I know you are the sales POP mm -hmm. guy, uh, when it comes to sales, one of the uh, fears I've seen, uh, what I sales people's uh, uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, is the fear of rejection. Uh, they are afraid that if they if they present their product, or service to a prospective client, uh, they are going to say no. And since many people are afraid of being rejected, uh, it, it kind of just uh, paralyzes them from even trying uh, to go out there and talk about the product or service. So how do you overcome the, the, the fear of rejection? Because, I mean, that's, that's part of that's part of sales. I talked to somebody yesterday who said uh, that when you get a no in uh, when he gets a no, he looks on that as an opportunity as opposed to a rejection. Absolutely. I'll go with uh, something that the uh, late uh, great Zig Ziglar used to say that uh, when you talk to people about um, your product or service, and they say no, he said interpret that to mean they don't know enough. So instead of uh, N-O, you should say, okay, they don't know enough, uh, K-N-O-W, and then it's your job uh, to look for a way to educate them so that they can know enough to get to a place where uh, they will be able to say yes. And, and that is, if the people that you are talking to, they they are qualified to use your product or service. As a matter of fact, uh, there are some people that when you talk to them and they say no, that's really a good thing because they they save you a lot of time, energy, and money, um, and you can move on to look for the right people. If I'm selling ice and I come across an Eskimo and the Eskimo says no to my eyes, I'm going to be very glad you know, that, <laughs> that they said no. Because if I keep trying to convince the Eskimo to buy my eyes, it's just going to be a lot of uh, time wasted. On the other hand, if I'm selling ice and I meet somebody who is stranded in the Sahara Desert in Africa, boy, I'm going to persuade that person to get eyes so I can quench their test. Mm. But the, the thing is, no, the per, absolutely, I agree 100%. Uh, but as you said, I mean, the problem is sometimes we stick too long with the with the wrong profile of, of customer uh, or prospect. And we think that somehow we can we can persuade them as opposed to just what you said is, you know, taking it as an opportunity to get out and get a, and get in front of the right the right customer. Um, so how do you, how do how do salespeople start to address the fear of rejection? Because I agree with you. I mean, it's it's a big one. It, it's it's inherent in the sales job, um, but it is it's it's constantly there. So how how do people start to overcome that? I I will draw from my own example. Um, again, you can tell from my, my little bio there. Um, I have a background as a former pastor before I got into business. And uh, as, a, as a pastor, you just go and deliver the sermons. You don't worry about if people are going to receive it or not because people come to church at least every Sunday, so you have a captive audience. When I moved into uh, doing business after business school, 
I really hated the idea of selling because I had the wrong mindset that selling is manipulating people to collect money from them. So I didn't want to do that. So I had the resistance of going out there and actually selling. But one day it really occurred to me that selling is really the distribution of solutions. Right. People have problems. Um, I have solutions and I should be proud and enthusiastic to go out there and distribute those solutions if I really love the customer. Because if you love somebody and you discover that the person has cancer and you have the cure for cancer, it will be wicked for you to keep that cure from the person who has cancer and you allow the person to die. Uh, that demonstrates that you don't love that person. So when I began to see sales as the distribution of solutions, not the manipulation of people to take money from them, it gave me a lot of bonus. And then when I also developed the love for my ideal client, I began to feel empathetic for them and I didn't want them to go for a long period of time without receiving the solution to the problem they are going through. So those two things really gave me the bonus to go out there and uh, present the service that I offer to people knowing that I am really distributing a solution and it is a demonstration of love to relieve these people from the problem that they have. So those two things really gave me the bonus. Not that I've not been rejected or mm -hmm. you know everybody has been saying yes, uh, but every time somebody says no, I am, I am encouraged to go back and talk to them if they are the ideal customer to look for a different angle of presenting the same service in an effort to really help them. And mm -hmm. uh, over time, that has really worked because research also shows that at any given point, about 95% of people who need a product or service they are not ready to buy. Right. So only about 5% are ready. So keeping that in mind also, when I talk to somebody that is ideal and they say no, or they don't show a lot of interest, I just say, well, they are part of the 95. So let me keep the relationship going over time. They will come around. And that has happened. Uh, that has turned out to be true. Yeah. So there's a couple of things I wanted to pick up on there, uh, Benson is, um, the first one that you said is like we're changing our mindset, and I think that is probably the the most critical thing is uh, you need to be excited about the product or service that you're offering. You need to believe in it. You need to have seen how you know the benefits of it, and to your point, then you need to be excited to bring those benefits to the right people. But that takes you know as you said that takes a mindset shift and that takes for you to really believe in your product because i think it's hard to sell something if you don't believe in it you're you're right uh you're right john and that's why i encourage everybody who is running a business who is in sales to make sure that before they commit to sell something they are not going to sell it because they want to make money even though money is going to become a byproduct but they want to sell it because they really believe in the transformation their product or service is going to bring to the ideal client. So once that belief is there and you know that that product or service is going to transform their lives, then it really gives you that courage to go out and, and sell it. So every time I talk to a business person and I see them hesitant to sell, I ask them that question. I said, do you really believe in the transformation your product or service is going to bring in the lives of people? If you don't, then change your business model or change, uh, look for a different problem to solve. And if you're a salesperson, if you don't believe that, you know, look for a different company to represent that you really believe in the transformation your product or service is going to bring to the ideal customer that will give you the bonus to 
to talk about it without, uh, you know, feeling some hesitation. Because John, the reality is, if you doubt your product or service, every time you are talking to a client, you are going to project that doubt on them. Mm -hmm. And if they are already skeptical, and you are also skeptical of your product or service, so you bring double skepticism in the presentation, nothing is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, no, you're correct. And it, it's interesting because, you know, anytime I come into contact with the salesperson, that's kind of one of the first things that I try to pick up on is how how much do they love their product or service? How much do they love working for the company they work for? How much do they really believe in it? I want that. And that's what I want. I want that kind of energy. I want to believe. I want to be as excited as as you are about your product. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I think it's Zig Ziglar or somebody else uh, who uh, brought out this code that uh, enthusiasm is infectious. Mm -hmm. So if you're enthusiastic about what you're talking about, it's going to infect the other person, you know, as a virus in a good way. I know we are in the pandemic uh, era, so we are, I'm not talking about bad yeah, virus. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking about good infection. <laughs> yeah, 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 we no. could do with some good. We could do with some good viruses. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the, other, the other thing, Benson, too, is, uh, you know, mind shift change requires some self-reflection as well, some self-awareness. And I think I think that's the other thing is uh, for salespeople, and it kind of goes for anybody, not just salespeople, it's it's maybe taking a step back for a moment and asking yourself, what is, what's your purpose? Why are you doing what you're doing? Uh, are you just doing it just to, for a paycheck or, or what, what, what is, what is the purpose of what you're doing? Cause I do feel that most people haven't ever stepped back and asked themselves that question. What is the actual purpose of what I'm doing? You are, you are right. And I used to, I used to say that, you know, anything that any of us is doing is, if we are not motivated by the love of the people we are serving, then it's going to be very difficult for us to find purpose in what we are doing. So if I assume that you are my ideal client, John, um, I have to first of all develop a sense of love for you as a person so that whatever I'm presenting to you, I am very sure that it's going to benefit you. Um, so it's going to give me that sense of purpose, you know, to talk to you about that, that, that product or, or service. So you are very right that when purpose is attached to it, uh, it, it, changes, it changes the whole dynamic as to how I am going to talk about you know, that product or, or service. And if, if, if I really love you as my ideal client, I am going to be willing to sacrifice the possibility that you might say no you know, to me. Um, because any parent out there knows that uh, you know, if you are changing a uh, dirty diaper for your child, uh, you might not like the smell of that diaper, uh, <laughs> but you're still going to change the diaper anyway because you you love your child, and you're not going to allow the child in that dirty diaper. You're not going to uh, worry about the way they react towards you or anything like that. You're going to allow the love you have for that child to overcome all of those things, and you'll still be able to serve that child despite you know the things that are surrounding uh, the dirty diaper. Uh, analogy that I'm giving here. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing too, I think, uh, Benson, it's really critical nowadays is that people want to, they want their salespeople to be authentic. They want to be able to trust them. They want to, you know, have more, I think, of a human relationship than perhaps uh, even before the pandemic when things were getting very automated. I think there's a real uh, hunger now for authenticity and connection. Absolutely. And, and when we are authentic, um, it's easier to build that trust. I mean, uh, John, you and I know that it's difficult for anybody to buy anything from you, uh, buy anything from me or any salesperson out there if they don't trust us. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that the more authentic we are, the easier it is 
uh, to be trusted. If I am a dog, and I think that you like cats better than dogs, and then when I'm talking to you, I try to mirror instead of barking, it's not going to be long uh, for me to, for my real self to come out. And then once I start barking, you say, uh oh, <laughs> I thought you were a cat before, but really you are a dog. Um, so just go, if you are a dog, just be a dog. You know, right. and if uh, people who don't like dogs say no to you, that's okay. You are going to eventually find people who love dogs. But if you are a dog, it's a lot of hard work to pretend to be a cat. Yeah. You know, and unfortunately, corporate America is spending so much money every year trying to train dogs to behave like cats. <laughs> You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a it's a great it's a great analogy. Um, it's a great analogy, Benson, because it's true. Because event, as you said, eventually, who you really are is going to come through. So if you're not if you're not authentic, if you're trying to be somebody else, if you're not a hundred percent um on the straight and narrow and you know you you bend things a little bit you know your trust you're never so all of these things are going to come back to bite you eventually uh, there's no way you can get through a, a, a concerted period of time by trying to be something you're not absolutely so off the bat um just be you and you know talk to that person naturally uh listen to them i was listening to uh one of your previous uh, who wrote the book on leadership? I think it's, it's based in the UK. Uh, and he was talking about, you know, one of the ways to heal mental health is just to listen to people. So if you come to a conversation and your desire is just to be you and you listen to really hear what the other person is saying and be authentic to make sure that, okay, whatever they are saying or whatever problem they have, is in alignment with the product or service you, you provide. And if it's not, for you to, to be honest and say, hey, based on what I've heard from you, I don't think our product or service is a good fit for you, but here is this other company that can serve you better based on what I've heard. It's really not that difficult. You know, but when yeah. you come and try to pretend and then try to make everything that everybody says look for a way to fit the uh round peg in a square hole then it's just going to be rough down the road yeah and and i think in the in the in the scenario that you outlined there i think as well uh if you do that uh number one you have built huge respect or trust with that customer because you've said listen benson our product's great, but from what you've told me, it's not going to be a fit for you. But here is this other one that that uh, I think uh, will be that 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 prospect who didn't become your customer will remember you and might actually refer you. They might come across other people say, oh, actually, I was talking to a guy. They've got the right product for you. Um, so it all benefits the, the honesty and authenticity. It, there's so much benefit down the road from it, down the road from it. Absolutely. And if you put all of those things together, John, uh, it takes away that fear. Uh, it takes away that uh, tension of going to talk to prospects because really there's nothing to hide. You are really just going to be yourself. You are genuine. You want to help people. Um, that is your purpose. So you really approach any sales situation or any conversation as hey, I'm just really going to have a conversation with somebody. Yes, I might not have met the person uh, before, but I'm just going to be myself and have some fun having a conversation. And at the end of the day, if I can help this person, then I'll go ahead and help them. If I cannot help them directly, I'll look for a way to help them indirectly with uh, another product or service that I'll refer them to. So it takes away all of that fear and you can really be you in any conversation. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, listen, Benson, this has been fantastic. Great place to, to finish up here. All of Benson's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Well, at the Consistent Profit Tree, we really help uh, 
businesses, especially businesses in construction, to increase their profit while working fewer hours. We realize that a lot of them are working long hours and they have little left to spend with their families. So our goal is to bring efficiencies in what they are already doing so they can generate more profit uh, while working fewer hours. So that saves them a lot of time, energy, and money. And it also cuts the, uh, the length of time it will take a company, let's say, to grow from uh, 2 million to, to 3. If normally that's going to take them maybe a year or two, our processes help them to cut that time down. So either way, it saves them time on the personal side and time on uh, the business side. So really, that's the gist of the value that we provide. Fantastic. Well, listen, Benson, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your insight and wisdom today. Thank you all for listening and watching. And I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Thank you.